On September 1st and 2nd, 1859, a strange spectacle unfolded in the skies and on the ground. The cause was a massive explosion on the sun that released a burst of energy and particles which rained down on Earth and ignited a series of effects that amazed, confused and alarmed the people of that time. Today we call that event the Carrington Event, after the astronomer who observed it and recognized its significance. In this video, we will explore the scientific and historical aspects of the Carrington Event and discuss what we have learned and what we still need to prepare for a similar event in the future. Welcome to life's biggest questions. Let's dive into what if a Carrington level event happens again today. Let's start off with the basics for a Carrington level event. Solar flares. The Carrington event was triggered by a solar flare, a sudden and intense flash of radiation and heat from the sun's surface. Solar flares are common occurrences, happening on average once a day, but most of them are not strong enough to affect Earth. The Carrington flare, however, was a monster, estimated to be 28 times in size, the largest ever recorded. The flare emitted a burst of high-energy particles called protons that reached Earth in less than 18 hours. But that was just the beginning of the story. Along with the solar flare, the Carrington event generated a coronal mass ejection, or CME, a huge cloud of plasma and magnetic fields that erupted from the sun's corona, the hot and tenuous atmosphere that surrounds the star. The CME traveled at a speed of about 3 million miles per hour, and it took only 17.6 hours to reach Earth. The impact of the CME on Earth's magnetic field was so strong that it caused a sudden and large disturbance, called a geomagnetic storm. The storm lasted for about two days and it produced several remarkable effects. The most spectacular effect of the Carrington event was the display of the Aurora Borealis and Aurora Australis also known as the Northern and Southern Lights. These natural phenomena occur when charged particles from the Sun interact with atoms and molecules in the Earth's upper atmosphere, producing colorful and dynamic curtains, bands and rays of light. During the Carrington storm, the auroras were seen as far south as the Caribbean and Central America, and as far north as Hawaii, Greenland and Siberia. Many people thought the world was ending, or that they had witnessed a divine omen or a supernatural event. Another notable effect of the Carrington event was the disruption of telegraph systems. In the 19th century, telegraphy was the fastest and most reliable means of long-distance communication, connecting people and businesses across continents and oceans. However, the telegraph wires acted as antennas for the electrical currents induced by the geomagnetic storm, and many telegraph operators received electric shocks, sparks and fires. Some even reported that they could transmit and receive messages without batteries or circuitry as if the Earth itself was the conductor. Messages became scrambled, garbled or lost, and the telegraph system was paralyzed or severely limited for several hours or days. The Carrington event also affected the magnetic field of the Earth, causing compasses to behave erratically or point in the wrong direction. Some compasses spun around, others flipped over, and still others showed no response at all. Magnetic storms were observed in many parts of the world, including tropical regions where the auroras are rarely seen. The scientific community started to realize the connection between solar activity, geomagnetism and electricity, and began to develop new theories and methods for understanding and predicting such phenomena. Today, we know much more about the sun, the earth and the nature of space weather. We have satellites, sensors and models that can monitor and forecast solar flares, CMEs and geomagnetic storms and alert us to potential hazards. However, we are still vulnerable to the effects of a severe space weather event, especially if it hits us when our technology and infrastructure are more complex and interconnected than ever before. If a Carrington level event happens again today, most of what we have stored in our computers and electronics would be lost forever. It would be like the scene from Snake Escape from Los Angeles, the part at the end where he disables all electronics around the globe, forcing humanity back into the dark ages. A Carrington event today would be a disaster for us, setting us back decades. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Please let me know any suggestions you may have down below.